What's going on, gang? Zach Wild here, and we're all rolling in the top 11. And here are some of my top 11 guitars of all time. Yeah, we'll start with Jimmy Page with Whole Lot of Love. The, the guitar solo is probably one of the greatest guitar breakdowns of all time. You know, it's everything that he created. You know, the writing, the solos. I mean, you know, I, I also love his guitar playing, the solo playing on the song Remains the Same. The solo in no quarter on the live album. It's weird because I listen to it now, they edited it down. They cut a bunch of it out, which I have no idea why, considering, I mean, it's some of Jimmy's greatest guitar playing. But if you can get the earlier vinyl of that, the performances on that are just amazing. His solo in Stairway to Heaven, you know, aside of the record, the actual album. They recorded, you know, the studio version. Obviously, we all know that's an iconic top three all-time greatest solo. It's just amazing, too. I mean, it's just the improv and his technique and it just, and the feel and the tone and it's just great. And as far as another breakdown solo, it would have to be probably Over the Mountain with St. Rhodes over there. I mean, you could pick any of Randy's solos and just, beyond epic. I mean, they're all masterpieces in, in songwriting. I remember the first time I heard Over the Mountain, I, me and my friends, we were just like, oh my God. I, they, you know, just I just started playing guitar, like getting into it and knowing about scales and everything like that. Just like going, oh my God, it's so fast. How can you play like that? That's the reason why we're still talking about St. Rose. It's the songwriting. I think with, with all musicians that we love and whatever, it's, you know, it's what they create and what they wrote. You know what I mean? So it's not who's the fastest or who's the cleanest or who's the best or, you know, Goodbye, Elbert Road by Elton John. It's, it's, it's the songs, you know what I mean? And what, what they created and the moments and the music that they created. All right, so moving on, we got, that's two of them. I guess uh, Eddie Van Halen, same thing with King Edward. You could just pick pick and choose anything you want in that. It's pure devastation. I guess you'd have to go with Eruption, obviously. As far as impact and just like earth shattering and changing the planet. I remember like it was like every record. There was some new, like at the bottom of a box of Cracker Jacks, a new Eddie changing the planet once again. You know what I mean? So now I remember when like when Mean Streets came out, it was just like, I don't even know what that is. Is that even guitar playing? I mean, you know, what what is that? It's just like insane noises that it's just like that's how is that even a guitar? I guess obviously you'd have to put St. Dime in there, a dime bag. People always ask, you know, what made Dime special to me, aside of the, the great technique and everything like that. To me, Dime sits like in the, the same realm and the same rarefied air as like Lord Iommi, as far as creating a complete genre of music. Because when it comes to extreme metal, the measuring stick is Pantera. Yeah, so for me, Dime, that, that's where I have it. You know, it's just, it, it's what he created. That's why I always call him a game changer. But, and then not only that, the solo in that song, just, you know, from all the guys he loved, from Randy and, and Ed, you know, in the, in the genre, it's a great memorable solo, and it's, and it, the writing. We gotta have uh, Lord Iommi in there. I mean, obviously he's the, uh, the creator of it all. So he's the Bach, Beethoven, and Mozart of riffs. We all wouldn't be here right now. Like this magazine exists because of this guy. Like everybody has jobs at the magazine. I can make a living playing music. All of us that are working in this field of music, <laughs> this guy has actually employed all of us. I mean, that yeah, that, that's like how massive his impact is. Uh, another great guy to listen to would be like Alan Holdsworth. You know, the guys at Meshuggah love Alan Holdsworth. You know, and they'd be the first ones to say, yeah, Alan Holdsworth is, is the man. I mean, you know, King Edward, that was his guy as well. Just the IOU record, I'm just saying for somebody, if they're like, oh, I've never heard of him, you know, check him out. But, you know, get that record. You could just, you know, and say, you know, that'll lead you to all the other records. Just, it's so unique 
and just unusual. And, and it's, it's very dissonant, but at the same time, very ear pleasing and just eerie and mysterious. Very unique. I mean, it really is. It's scales and it's no choices. And I mean, I, it's just pretty amazing. I don't think you'll ever speak with one guitarist that it isn't blown away by Alan Waldorf. I guess we'll have to go with Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush. I mean, it's not metal. I mean, you know, in that regard, but it's just uh, his playing still, just like Alan Holdsworth and all the guys I mentioned, it still trans, it crosses over into that, you know, as far as technique and all this other stuff. But yeah, I mean, even though it's, it's a blues-based song like Ken B, the, the guitar playing is just staggering. Obviously, Jimmy, Jimi Hendrix, you know, Frank Marino was inspired, obviously, by Jimmy. Jimmy was a Model T Ford, like Frank Marino is the Formula One version of that car. An insane technique and just command over the instrument, and, but speaks. You know, it's not just a bunch of fast jive and stuff like that. It's actually musical and, and it's speaking. I guess John McLaughlin as well from uh, Mahavishnu Orchestra. Same thing. I, I think if you ask a lot of metal guitar players, and, Listen back to Mahavishnu and stuff like that. That was, you know, from around like 69, 70, 71, 72. And all the musicians in that band just mind blown. You know, and a lot of a lot of metal guys, you know, you you listen to fusion and it, you know, just because you, you end up eventually you find yourself there because you're always trying to improve on the instrument. So you're listening to better and better and better and better musicians, which always leads you to all these guys I'm talking about. The first album, Inner Mounting Flame, you know, if somebody's like, oh, I've never heard of John McLaughlin and the Mob Vision Orchestra, it's just, that was the first album that they did. And just real eerie, very dissonant, dark, and but just like uplifting at the same time. Just really, really insane writing and just performances, obviously, from the guys and the live albums. The live recordings are ridiculous. It's just everybody going off, going insane. Another one would be uh, Al Demiola. <laughs> before Inge. So, uh, you know, so we all found Al first, you know, because Al came out. And it's really an amazing time in the dark line. You had King Edward with Eruption, and then you also had Al with Elegant Gypsy with Race with Devil on Spanish Highways. So it's the same amount of time. So, I mean, it's just all this insane, amazing, game-changing guitar playing. But Al's technique and then the muting, the mutoa, any any metal guitar player my age that they'll all say they're disciples about. That album, Elegant Gypsy, also the first one, you know, landed at Midnight Sun when he had just left playing with Chick Corea and started doing a solo thing. You know, after Return to Forever, which is amazing as well. But not landed at Midnight Sun, it just the wizard and uh, I mean the, the guitar playing on that is ridiculous and then just led him to Elegant Gypsy and all his solo records. I mean, and Al's still out there killing it today. I guess you got to put Ingbe in there. I guess I remember the first time when I heard Steeler. You know, me and my friends, you know, because we were all into Al and everything like that. Like, I remember my buddy played for me over the phone, playing Ingbe. I was just like, you got to be kidding me. It was just, it was like Al with vibrato and just with a nasty tone and just like, just dirty and just mean and aggressive, so uh, I think they're still killing it today. I mean, it's just, it's just flawless, you know what I mean? I, you know, whatever we do to Generation X thing, I get the pleasure of seeing all the guys play every night. You know, between Nuno killing it, Tosin, Father Steve, Father Ringbay, it's just amazing. You know, the guys crush it every night, so it's it's always inspiring. You know, Evil Eye, but did did do, but did did do, but did did do, I mean, I think they just, out of control. As far as I'm concerned, the last meteor to hit the planet. I remember Derek was, Sherinian was telling me, he said, uh, when him and JD were at Berkeley, because of Bing Bay, they opened up a whole complete ward on Bach, Beethoven, and, you know, like all these classical studies of guitarists want to learn classical stuff because that's how massive Bing Bay's impact was. And then obviously, Steve Vai, you have to put Father Steve in there. You know, Steve, as far as influencing, I mean, it's, it's so crazy when I would hear like guitarists, you know, as far as impacting people, as far as style, I always tell Steve that it's just like, he's one of the last guys as well. You know, as far as people 
gravitating and, and copying his style. You know, the sound and the tone. I go, wow, I wonder who your favorite guitar player is. <laughs> you know, and I hear a lot of, when you hear players and stuff like that, where you just go, you know, because Steve has such a distinct sound. Just sounds like a mad scientist. Just want to say thanks for tuning in. And uh, doing a hang here on the top 11. Hope you uh, can check out some of these amazing uh, guitar players and musicians. And uh, that's about it, man. All right, take care, gang.